All right, Carver High, you got my boy Lamar. Don't tell anyone I like him. Yeah, I know. Even though you're a Steeler fan, uh, you do like Lamar Jackson. Uh, you secretly wish that he was uh, on your squad. Here we go with these guys tearing up the clubhouse. Cleveland clinches a playoff spot. They're throwing go. the champagne everywhere. Just enough of this stuff. They got the goggles on. What have we done? Nothing. You've done nothing, nothing so far. All right, here's Lamar Jackson. Of course, the Ravens are out to an 0-2 start, and they are heading to Dallas this weekend. Big D. Uh, for a big game, 425 p.m. East. Here's Lamar. He's saying, Scotty, we've been hurting ourselves. We got to clean some things up, and we'll get back in the win column. Man, just, just get 1-0. Oh. You know, uh, we're starting the season off slow, but I believe guys in the locker room, we know what we want to do. You know, when we go out there Sunday, and we know we, we've we been busting our behinds uh, each and every game. It's like we're we coming up short, but... I feel like we, at the end of the day, we beat ourselves in some, in somewhat, you know, because it's penalties killing us, uh, the Emmys we we doing, you know, even me, you know, making little missed throws. We just gotta fix those little things, and I feel like we're gonna win our games that we're supposed to. Mm. Yeah, look, uh, that hairdo is fantastic, and that's kind of what I'm going for now that I'm growing my hair out, Carver High. I also uh, want to say that uh, I think they're gonna beat the Cowboys. Mm. One and a half for the Ravens. They're the road favorites right now. 47 and a half is the total. Uh, Lamar is 20 and one. That is 20 wins and one loss straight up against NFC opponents in his career. 20 and one against the NFC. That is staggering. That's what you would, uh, that's what you would say is not a small sample size. That's not a flu. That's not, that's not a small sample size Uh, for whatever reason. He, he beats lose. these teams from the other conference uh, whenever he plays them. Uh, I am uh, – it's still Thursday, but so far this week I have been uh, leaning Cowboys, Scotty. I'm leaning towards the Cowboys, uh, amazingly. You know, which, at the team... end of the day, you'd root for because then the Ravens would be 0-3, which I know you wouldn't have a problem with that either. I don't have a problem with that, but look, the Cowboys <laughs> – uh, I think the Cowboys, offensively speaking – can win games. I think that uh, Dak is good. I think CD's good, etc. But they cannot stop the run. I mean, I have never seen anything like watching them have Kamara cut through them like a deli slicer on uh, Sunday at Jerry's World. So they have no edge at home that, you know, they've apparently been bragging about. They had won 16 straight regular season home games. But the last two times they played there, they got their ass beat there. So which is it? The playoffs is worse than losing regular season games. What do I care about winning regular season games every time? Playoffs are all that matter when you're the Dallas Cowboys, when you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, when you're the San Francisco 49ers, when you're the Green Bay Packers. That's it. I mean, they, you know, they play for titles. They don't play for regular season wins. And I'm telling you, they were terrible last week. Baltimore and that quarterback – uh, that record of his against the NFC, that's it. I, I just, if I'm going to look at a team, we've already seen Dallas lose. We've seen Baltimore lose twice. Who do I have more faith in uh, to win a game? It's Lamar Jackson. Uh, it is Lamar Jackson. If, we, if, we, if we're talking about that, there's no question about it. And yes, the Dallas defense run-wise, not pretty, uh, especially with what uh, Kamara did to them last week, uh, destroyed them. Uh, next, we will go to, uh, Pittsburgh, Scotty, where, of course, the Chargers come calling for the Steelers this week. Uh, we talked about Herbert's ankle yesterday. Harbaugh says he does expect him to play on Sunday. Uh, good luck with that with Watt chasing you. Uh, we've played some really funny, uh, you know, weird Harbaugh sound bites already this year. Uh, here's another one for him, Scotty. He really loves his coaching staff. What about his coaching staff? What about his kind of like teaching philosophy lends itself to such good Good, like running production. Uh, it's a, he's just a he's just a great he's a great coach. I mean, one of the best I've ever been around. Um, you know, like Moses, I'm gonna I'm gonna die leaning on my staff. Uh, I, I, Greg Roman, Jesse Minner, Ryan Fick, and those coordinators are, you know, in my opinion, the some of the best in the business. Well, there you like go. Moses, I, like Moses, I'm gonna die leaning on my staff. Where does he come up with this stuff? 
well, Harbaugh. As you know, where does we, he come up with this we, stuff? We frequently talk about walking with a piece of salmon in the desert with Birkenstocks on and no water, and suddenly there's a lake of water. We refer to it all the time, so he should be entitled to do the same. Yeah, well, let us uh, let me give you all the, the rundown of what's going on here. Obviously, yesterday we talked about Love. He was uh, officially limited at practice. Today he did have pads on when he was out there, so clearly he's cleared for contact if he's got pads on and he's working. Obviously, the Willis thing, he's going back to Tennessee. As you mentioned, 85% of the time he stood on the sideline. He only played in a couple games. Now, he was awful in those couple games that he played in, but still, yes, he is there is a chance. There is a chance he could start if Love is not uh, going to be the guy on Sunday. But to be fair, Scotty, he got no problem with Nashville. You want to know why? That check always cleared. Uh, I know you said Sunday, you know, you're not a chip on your shoulder type of guy. Is there really no part in you that if you start on Sunday, it's not like I want to prove these guys wrong for whatever happened when you were with the Titans? No, I could care less, bro. No, I think I got paid the whole time I was there, bro. I'm more than blessed for the opportunity they've given me, and they brought me into this league, you know. Uh, whether those guys are there or not. You know, that organization, they took a shot on me, Miss Amy, and they did a great job by me, all I'm concerned. There you go. <laughs> he got Listen, paid. I told you. Right? How many times how many times have I told you? <laughs> like, that said it all right there. These guys all play for paychecks. There is no other reason to play. Like, you heard him. He's like, oh, you got to want to get a piece of that. These guys don't even care about winning. They don't. All they want is money. That's it. They they are pro football players for one reason and one reason only, money. And if they get a ring along the way and win and they're on a championship team, uh, it's gravy on top. But, you know, how about all the guys? Now, tell me, tell me I'm wrong. How many guys have sold their Super Bowl rings years down the line? Like all of them? No one gives a rat's yeah, a ass. All they care about is money. Money. I, I love that though. Try to pump the guy up. Oh, you're not. Look. And my, I got paid the whole time. I got paid the whole time I was there. That check went right. The check was here every week, every game check. Boom. Uh, just because I didn't play doesn't mean I didn't get paid. Uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, minus two and a half for Tennessee. Uh, 37 and a half is the total. I did see this at one point last night creep to one and a half, but it's back to two and a half now, Scotty. I'm on, like I said, if he plays, I'm on the Titans. If Love plays, I'm on the Packers. So game time bet. That is, uh, that is a true wait until Sunday morning. Uh, they usually put the inactives out. I think it's 90 minutes before. So around 1130 AM Sunday morning, you'll know if Love's going to play or not. I'm sure some of the insiders will know maybe even a couple of hours before that. Uh, but make sure you check that out before you get involved. All right, next. Raiders, Scotty, uh, coming off a huge win in Baltimore against the Ravens. Now come back home. They're going to have the Panthers in town. We know what kind of problems they have. I'm sure you remember seeing this last week. Minshew threw that bad pick while the Raiders were down, and you saw Max Crosby come over and really talk him up. Got in his face, you know, not get in his face, but he basically grabbed him, was pointing at him. You can get this done. We got your back. Well, Minshew, I played it more for that, Scotty, and more to just listen to this guy say dude like six times in this whole clip. Here's Minshew. How big of a deal was Max's pep talk to you after the interception early on? The the no, it was awesome, man. He grabbed me and just said, oh, hey, we awesome, got your back, man. dude. Like, we need that Washington State Gardener. We need that, you know? And uh, I was like, man, you're right, dude. Let me see if I can go whip that up real quick. But, uh, nah, <laughs> man, that dude's a great leader. He, he does it the right way, man, and uh, couldn't be man. couldn't be more grateful to have him on our team. <laughs> Listen, how great is that? Because uh, my man, my man is now starting in the NFL for the Raiders. He's Chuck in charge, and I thought he was always a clear backup and a good backup. He was, you know, serviceable for sure. He could play, and they always said, like, if you need a guy for a month, that's the guy you want. Now he's starting, and every other word is dude and bro and man, and like he's just so stoned, and it's legal in Nevada. I mean, my man looked completely baked. Oh, dude, rah, rah, yeah, man, yeah, dude, rah. and I'm making all kinds of money. They gave him like, what what'd they give him, $25 million? Like, they gave this guy a boatload of money, and he's starting now. He don't care about nothing. Like, when you 
get the bag and they give you the power to you're the starting quarterback and you get the bag <sighs> what's next free hookers i mean honestly he's in vegas loving life dude man my it was God, so great dude. man i mean that's just let's go my, i got my van outside man let's go out to the van uh raiders uh are minus five and a half that's always a number that makes you very scary. Uh, 39 and a half is the total. Of course, the Red Rocket, Andy Dalton, uh, t- steps in for Bryce Young this week for Carolina. I guess that's the only thing I'm worried about for the spread is, be- is because Dalton's playing. He knows how to play. So, you know, Led Zeppelin, the back door will be unlocked. He's your back door man right there. A guy that can play uh, four quarters and he'll sling it until the gun goes off. So I'd worry about that five and a half. If it were young, I would have already bet on the Raiders while I was there on my account. That's how bad the Panthers are. But with Dalton, I think the door is wide open. And, and if not, then just kick the screen and go right through anyway. <laughs> Moffy said he looks like uh, he looks like McConaughey in Days to Confused. Wooderson. Wooderson, man. Yeah, man. That's it. That's uh, it. Right. <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, Bryce Rah. Young, of course, he goes to the bench, Scotty. If there's anyone in the league who uh, knows about being the number one overall pick in the draft and maybe not getting it done, being replaced early in their career, maybe sometimes taking two, three, or even four stops before they finally figure it out and are in a good situation, it's Baker Mayfield. He talked about the young situation. Obviously, mine didn't happen in the same time frame with Bryce, but quarterback's hard, especially for young guys um, when you're not surrounded with the pieces that you know, are not given the opportunity to have success. And so um, that's a lot of the time guys have the talent. They might have the brains, so but they don't have the right opportunity, guy, the right fit. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here right now in, in a way better fit than the other places I've been. And, and that's... That's not to put other teams down, but it's a matter of the pieces around you, the coaches, and uh, for Bryce, a guy that, you know, I can relate to this, finding that belief within yourself again, and it, he'll get it. it. His story's far, far from finished. You know, look, here's the reality of it, is that uh, Baker Mayfield just got $100 million, period. That's it. Uh, and, I, and I think when he was ran out of Cleveland – I don't think you ever saw that or anyone really saw that coming for him uh, with the way that things ended there. When I he was he ran out of Carolina. off for them and got abused. I thought he did too. He got physically he abused too. and mauled there. They didn't protect him. They did nothing. They let him get his head taken off every Sunday. I thought he yep. tried and played his ass off. And I thought he lit it up with the Rams. And now he lit it up with Tampa and he got the money. I don't think right. uh, Young is done I think Young looks done in Carolina, and I think he definitely needs a change of scenery. But I'll tell you one thing. Right now, he totally sucks. He sucks right now, and he needs a change of scenery, but it took Baker four stops. I mean, when Baker went to Carolina, it was a disaster. The organization's a disaster. Anyone who passes through those doors right now, it's a disaster. It's just one of those places. And if you get put in the right spot, great coaching, great pieces, Suddenly you look like the number one overall draft pick again. Uh, And it's probably going to happen for Bryce somewhere else, like it did for Baker and not in Carolina. Or he might end up a a career backup. And so so what if you get paid? Yes, the New York football giants head to Cleveland this week. Of course, they are 0-2, looking for their first win of the season. Here is quarterback Daniel Jones. Uh, he's very aware. He hears from plenty of people what the Giants' record is so far. Talk um, from the coaches to the players or the players amongst themselves about 0-2. Uh, I mean, I think everyone realizes our record. You know, I think um, everybody understands that. But um, no one's discouraged or no one's letting that affect our preparation and how hard we work going into the game. So, um, you know, there's a great energy and, and feel in the building still. And I think that that's important. And important to our preparation, important to our process, and, and making sure we're practice, practicing well and, and preparing to play well. So, um, yeah, we, we know the record, but it's a long season, and, and uh, we got a good football team. Mm. You know, I think they have a shot in this game. I'm not overwhelmed at all by the Cleveland Browns. Uh, I thought they looked 
almost unbeatable with Flacco and that defense of Schwartz's last year. But I'm not seeing any of that. The fruits of that aren't visible to me yet. So, you know, they got lucky last week as far as I'm concerned. And I think that the Giants are getting too many points. In fact, uh, I could see them winning the game outright. Outright, huh? Outright for the G-Men, 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 Big Blue uh, on Sunday at the Dog Pound. Six and a half. That would be plus 270, by the way, on the money line uh, for the G-Men uh, there in Cleveland. 38 and a half is the total. I don't know if I can walk uh, all the way across that bridge with you uh, for them to win outright, but I will absolutely join you in taking the six and a half points. Uh, I got no problem with that. I, I, I would not be laying six and a half so with look, the Browns anywhere. Th- yes. They, they, you know, they got their ass beat by uh, Dallas in Cleveland. Then they yeah. barely got by the Jaguars. And, I, you know, so I think they looked really average in both games. One they lost, one they won, and they won by five. You're talking about six and a half. So, listen, this weekend, here's one thing that I'm certain of, is that it's desperation time for all these 0-2 teams. Every team that's 0-2 is desperate to win. This is the NFL. You go 0-3, you're basically finished. You're you're 0-3, your season's over, and you're, like, playing for positioning of draft choices. That's all there is to it. And so you have to win. And I think... Without question, Brian Dable is feeling heat. And it's making this Shane and and Dable uh, ticket uh, look embarrassing. This has been going on now for a year and a month, okay? One full season of failure. Now they're into year two of failure. These guys are so desperate for a win because Mara's looking down the hall going, I'm going to start firing somebody. Like Mara's had about enough. When now I'm sure that everybody got their rocks off at the Giants uh, headquarters when they saw Barkley drop the ball, but he still had a big game and his first game was just as big in Brazil. So Mara still rues the day that that guy traded him to the Philadelphia Eagles. And I guarantee you when he says his prayers at night, he blames him. He blames him, Shane, for that move. I guarantee it. And if Dable and Shane don't start winning, their days are numbered. I don't disagree. Uh, especially with uh, you know who lurking uh, on we several televisions. We everyone. We, they fired yeah. everyone within their deal. They all had five year deals. They all got fired in three years. Uh, this is right. year three. And, uh, and I keep uh, I keep pushing. Uh, but there is a marriage there. As much as Giant fans aren't going to like it between Belichick and Mara, uh, it is there. Uh, if if things go really Listen, bad, you're right. They you're, love and, each and other. You're, you're right, Mike. And and you know what else on top of that. Here is a guy that comes across as a youth minister, uh, Mara. He comes across as a youth minister. He really is. Like, he's such a nice guy. He's like, you know, you want your daughter, uh, you know, to marry his son, right? You're like, I trust that man. But he does have ice in his veins when it comes to firing people. My man will fire people, uh, and he's done it repeatedly. He just, he'll fire you. If you do not produce, he will fire you. Unlike... Everyone else in this town. Honestly, there's no more George Steinbrenners. Mara's the next best thing. He will fire head coaches in three years. He has no problem with it at all. Woody Johnson doesn't even fire people uh, at the rate Mara does. I mean, I'm right. I've been here long enough. Do I have the street cred now? I've seen this guy fire 10 people. So I don't want to hear it. I think those guys are in big trouble if they keep losing. He is going to want to bring the franchise back to respectability. Uh, to glory. One guy out they there Super Bowls. can do that. I don't know if Belichick will bring him back to glory, but he'll bring him back to respectability. Glory. Uh, if that does happen. Not against glory finish. indeed. Let's squeeze this in before we go uh, to break. Of course, the Chiefs are going to be in Atlanta on Sunday night. Chiefs out to the 2-0 and start. Falcons with the win Monday night in Philly. Of course, that means Patrick Mahomes is coming to town. And for, Re- for Raheem Morris, that means... Nightmares uh, is what that means. What does he do so well that makes him so hard to defend? He's smart. He's unique. He can move around. He can buy time. He can play within the framework of the system. Um, He can see, he knows what you're doing on defense. Um, He's grown up to the point of, you know, he's almost seen everything at this point. You know, seen every trick, every trade, every 
every gimmick, every gamut, every, every whatever you want to call it. Um, he's played at the highest level. He's played in the, the highest game that we all want to play in. Um, he's been able to, to, to really go out there and, and be at the top of his game in just about everything. And he's just one of the best. I mean, I don't even know. He's an alien, you know, so to speak. He's, he's, he's those guys that you consider and put him in that alien, that alien type uh, light. And, um, yeah, he's the best. He's one of the best, Alex. He ain't no Rick James. He's an alien. Super freak, no doubt. Uh, <laughs> three and a half for the Chiefs on Sunday night with a 46 and a half uh, here in Atlanta. Remember, it's Arthur Blank night, too, uh, with your hot dogs and your chips and your soda. Oh, how I want the Falcons to beat the Chiefs on Sunday night, honestly. Mm. I want everything to great. go right. The, the ceremonies, the hot dogs, uh, the free sodas, all the kids are lit. Everybody's happy, and then Cousins does it again, and the Chiefs lose. But oh, goal. First of all, bizarre story uh, with Dan Campbell that I'm sure you saw. Uh, yeah. He had to sell his house due to security concerns. I guess the whole neighborhood and the whole city figured out where Dan Campbell lived. I guess they were showing up at his crib when after losses or something. Like, everybody was giving I mean, the guy's like the best coach the team's had in like in like 50 years. And we're all going to show up at the guy's house and make his life miserable. Uh, so Dan Campbell had to move, Scotty. I know you saw that story. Well, and, you know, the thing that was weird about it was, is like uh, the wife had said something about it. it was a diamond in the rough. It was their favorite house. It was awesome. It had everything. It was perfect. The neighborhood, the town, everything. They loved it. It was their dream house and everything else. And then... Uh, now they're selling it and moving because they don't want anyone to know where they live. It's kind of bizarre. And first of all, uh, you would think that the Lions could uh, do something ab about that security-wise. Secondly, uh, this guy is the size of a mountain. Who in their right mind would F with that guy? Like, if I'm in a bar and that guy was mad at me and I, he caught me looking at his chick, uh, you might want to head to the exit in a hurry or jump out a window. Dan Campbell is not the kind of guy I would want to piss off. He is a monster. I mean, that guy is huge. Like, who, why would he be afraid of anyone? You drive up on my house and you're that bit. Listen, someone, like you know, walking tall. That guy's got a nightstick. He's so huge. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm surprised. I really am that he's leaving his dream house because he's afraid of some fans. I mean, I, I don't get it. The NFL can't do anything about that because, you know, the NFL is the FBI. They're the Department of Justice. The NFL is the CIA, and they can't get rid of people harassing Dan Campbell. I mean, what is next? These stories you tell me. Can't we, uh, well, we like, buy a gate or something? Yeah, like, we can't we get, and... you'd, think, you'd think he'd live in the rich gated look, community I... of his security. Honestly. Now, look, we don't. Uh... I mean, who knows where the guy is at? I, I'm none of us. You probably don't want anybody at your house either. If in that situation, like, leave the guy alone. Just honestly, how Listen, how crazy I, do you have to be to go out to the head coach's house uh, and 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 like act like a moron? Like, where 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 are we at? I, get, I guess that's today's day. I get a little, so. uh, you know. I was with my buddy the other day in Vegas, and I get a little uh, people screaming stuff at me. Uh, you know, eight out of 10 dentists prefer, I get good stuff like shake it up and you demand and all yeah. this, but then I get, I get one or two that are fruity, uh, that are, you know, a little foul or whatever, or, you know, that are nasty. And I just, uh, I ignore them. Like, I don't, mm. I, I, what am I, I'm nice to people that are cool to me. And if you're a D to me, uh, I'm, I, I ignore you. And if you want a piece of me. Uh, which I've had happen to me. As you know, I've been attacked in Manhattan uh, several times uh, of record with the police. And um, it depends on who you are, I guess, and your size. Because Mafia and I always do sell the 6'5 and 6'4, 240. And I am 240 full of F you. I am, I, you know, I'm a big boy. So, you know, I always notice when I'm walking around, people don't mess with big dudes. <laughs> they mess with dudes no. they think they can take out. Big dudes, people question don't. whether or not you're going to take them out. Now, I know I'm an old man and everything else, but I'm crazy. And I, and Mafia knows I'm violent. I'm dirty. You want to play basketball dirty? I'll break your nose. What do you want? I'll trip you, slew foot you. I'll kick you in the stones. 
I'll, I'll gouge your eye out. I'll do it. Trust me, I'll do it. So come on by the house and visit me. You don't like me? Come on over. I'm always in a generally foul mood. I'm with you on the Lions uh, minus the Thank three you. in Arizona. I don't know what happened to this story, Lions. but it suddenly turned uh, into yes, me and violence. Yes, got everybody and upset. Nest and, and you've done it again. Uh, everybody uh, got upset. I did it again. trying to make um, me look bad. I saw Joe Burrow say yesterday that the Bengals are not panicking by any means after an 0-2 start. I also saw today that T. Higgins was back at practice. So that's really good news for them uh, ahead of Monday night's game uh, with the Washington football team uh, that they're going to have at home. So that's good. They're going to destroy them Monday night. Uh, that is a bloodletting. I think Monday night the, um, the Bengals are going to score 45 points on their own. 